Hadley's Run, a Starship Saga. I found this developer on Reddit. Uh, they were bemoaning in the game dev subreddit how hard it is to get people to try their game. And it's true. We saw that when we did 15 minutes dungeon, they gave us five keys to give away. Literally couldn't even give the keys away. Like, it's rough in the indie space. And this is a reality we need to confront and accept as game developers. We need to understand you're competing against a lot. And even just getting attention is difficult. So I reached out and said, hey, I'd love to take a look at your game uh, and, and show it. And they said, here you go. And I was like, I don't know, this is probably gonna be some medium effort, but look at this. Isn't this cool? Doesn't this look great already? Oh my gosh. Okay, so we're gonna dive into our analysis. To start off with great typography for once in an indie game, a typographic logo that I'm like, oh, this is fantastic. I immediately get a strong vibe of what this game is. Some sort of Firefly-y type sort of thing. Uh, Starship Saga, so we've got this kind of bold, uh, crunchy uh, typeface up front that is kind of raw and um, aggressive, combined with this very elegant serif, light type font. Um, really, really good. In the, the divider lines here, never underestimate the value of a good line. Lines can make all the world of a difference in your visual design. Imagine this without these lines. It's immediately way worse. And you'll notice as well, hold on, let's bring this into Figma. Love the music too, ah, oh, so good. Let me bring this into Figma. Um, do, 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 do. Scroll down. Okay, we're gonna go to the browser. There we go. I apologize for blasting everyone's eyes out with my Figma. The uh, dark mode is gone for some reason. I don't know. I, I need to figure out how to re-enable that. Okay. Uh, does this dawdling? I love the colors. The orange buttons are a bit much, but they at least stand out. Okay, we're going to talk about that. Yeah. So, I want to point out shapes. Shapes are so important. Look at that. See that shape? Can you imagine how much worse this would have felt if this didn't line up in a box? If these lines like extended out beyond it or were shorter than, but because we have that square there, especially if you can key that into like a golden ratio size, it feels great. Look for what shapes your elements create to the human eye and it will improve your visuals. Okay, let's go back to the game. All great things are in a box. <laughs> That's great. Okay. Um, so we've got our characters here in kind of a um, floating heads, almost pseudo style uh, poster. Uh, it works. They're kind of compelling. They're kind of interesting. You get some tension uh, with this gal looking to the side, but then eyes are pointed at the camera. It's this kind of coy expression that leads you to believe, hey, there's some sort of a mystery. There's something going on here. Once again, pay attention to body language and how that introduces things. This guy just feels kind of gruff. I don't feel much of an invitation based on him as a character, but what pulls me in about him is his, uh, is his outfit. Um, this outfit is very distinct and it kind of lends into here. We've got these very visually noisy outfits, but they present a world and a story that I think is interesting. And I think they did it intentionally because the rest of this feels so much more open. And so it the noisiness in this space doesn't bother me as much because my eye has a lot of room to wander up here and rest when it needs it. Now let's talk about this, uh, this ship blasting off uh, composition. Uh, you uh, kind of, at least my eye, tends to go in this space here between the logo and the ship. And then that line of the boost takes me down to the character and then we have this slope down leading us into the main female character, right? So decent composition. I think it could be a little bit tighter, uh, to be frank. Um, this ear here is kind of making a little bit of a tangent. If I, let's go back to the browser and I can zoom in and show you guys exactly what I'm talking about. This line here is just a little bit too close for comfort, right? The line from the ear going up into that, it doesn't quite feel intentional to me. I would like to see that um, 
like if we could bring in the uh the blast effect a bit just so it didn't look quite so um close to that ear right so now that tangent line gets taken care of a little bit it just feels like it flows a little bit better when we do that to me than if we get rid of that shape just a little bit of visual conflict in my opinion um and then uh and then that all leads us into the buttons let's talk about these buttons bright orange um from my understanding um the, the uh this game is like an african western and i love that concept i love that african concept um i think we need way more of it i have a copy of um Shoot, I don't remember. There's a tabletop RPG backed, uh, created by uh, some folks in Africa that is all about African mythology and everything, and I'm really excited to get my hands on it. Um, supposedly they're shipping it, I don't know. Uh, but from what I've observed of, of the aesthetic of those cultures over there is that oranges and blues are and purples are, are very big colors. And so I think it's tying into that sort of cultural heritage. I like that, but the buttons themselves feel, they do feel very distracting, right? Uh, sounds cool. I know, avocado, right? It's so cool. I can't wait. Once it comes in, we'll do a whole show off on stream. Maybe we'll do a show off of, um, shoot, there was another one of uh, indigenous peoples um, uh, to the Americas, and I can't remember. What it was. Oh, Coyote and Crow. Yeah, Coyote and Crow, which is a gorgeous book, and I'm really curious about playing that someday. Uh, let's talk about why these buttons don't quite work. First off, the color is a huge contrast, but that's not necessarily a problem. Contrast can be good. For me, the big problem is it looks like they're supposed to be rounded on the corners, but they're not. And so these tan pixels over here make it look unfinished. So if we did this same thing, bloop, and then rounded the corners and it was transparent, then it starts to look a little bit better. That feels a little bit better. I really like, however, that texture. You can see that kind of spray paint, weathered um, steel sort of material you picture on a spaceship. That's good. I'd love to bring that in. I think that's strong. Keep that. Um, but just getting rid of those surrounding tan pixels makes it feel a lot more intentional. Now, the other problem with this is the composition of the artwork behind it, right? The composition is causing a lot of these sort of frust visually frustrating lines where we have these points of conflict, visually speaking, right? So we'll bring that up. There's four of these points every time these rays are going through it. So lots of opportunities for the eye to just kind of get exhausted. I mean, look at all these points of intersecting high contrast values. It's a lot. It's a lot to um, kind of have to visually parse out with your brain. So if it were me, I would change the button placement or the uh, the artwork composition where like this blast could be going a lot higher you know if it were uh oh <laughs> move back move back move back move back there we go uh something closer to that well i guess we don't really want that we'll kind of bring this in a little bit and add something and you know just something to frame it up a little bit better um, and I know you lose a lot of the dynamism of that, but it also feels a whole lot better. And so there's probably a way you could incorporate that blast off dust cloud, bring it up, make there just be fewer points of tension on those buttons. Let's go back to our game. Uh, I think I have that one. I believe it's based on Native Americans, though. Yes, yes, that one is uh, Coyote and Crow is Indigenous Peoples of the Americas. Yes. The rectangles are quite odd. It feels like it should be a different shape with a different vibe. Which is interesting, because it's sci-fi, right? Asheroth, 86. Hello, welcome in. Come on in, Asheroth. Good to see ya. 
Uh, we're doing an analysis of this indie game, Hadley's Run, which has uh, an itch page, and they are putting it up on Steam. It is available for wishlisting on Steam right now. Let me throw the link in chat again. Ariel, what if we put the buttons on the top side so that the rays kind of point to the buttons? Yeah. So, okay, let's let's talk about that. I think that's an interesting point, and I did think about that. And I want I want to explore that and see if my intuition on why we shouldn't do that is right or not. Like, if they were up here, right? And then we'll just kind of black that out, right? So that could work. And it's not as bad as I was thinking it might be. Oh, wait, hold on. I got to bring us back to the browser. Hold on. Um, I think if there were slightly more muted color of the man's shirt, that would also be good. Could be. Could be, Avocado. I could see that. And it's also good to reuse color palettes, right? Whenever you can have repetition, Repetition is a, a, a is a, a, a design principle that's more than just visual design, by the way. We, we love repeated shapes. That's why forests are so visually interesting to us, because we have that tree repeated all over the place, right? In a very nice, naturally uh, chaotic sort of way. But um, the same thing applies for humor. One of the biggest principles for humor is repetition with variation. And one of the biggest uh, principles for visual design is repeated colors. You meant on the top and horizontally. That's interesting. So um, instead of doing it uh, stacked like this, instead we did, if we do, hold on. hey, Figma, why are you not giving me my uh, auto adjust here? Okay. More than one way to do this. We'll just do it the slow way. Drag them up, and then adjust. Okay. Shrink that space down a bit. Kind of put them up here, or even uh, center them. I kind of like the centered. That's nice. It kind of brings you to here, which brings your eye down and over to here. You have a whole bunch of empty space, but that might work. The centering kind of feels like a command console type sort of approach. That could be interesting. Um, the, the trouble is now you have, uh, Monadano, thank you so much for the follow. Um, I, I think the, the issue you might run into here is how do you determine, uh, which buttons are most important? Because when you have top down, there's a very clear hierarchy and you expect like quit to be at the bottom and you expect play at the top. That hierarchy loses a little bit when you go horizontal. Um, what if you stacked offset instead of vertical, almost following the background? That could be interesting. Like, what if you, like, stacked them up like this? Right? Kind of interesting. That's, that's a take. You know? Hold on. Daughter's coming in. One second. Okay, uh, I think some other space games use meteors flying in from the edge of the screen to include the space themes into the buttons and not clutter them too badly. So I might replace the moon. You could? Yeah, we, we could talk about uh, changes to the artwork itself to improve the look. Um, I mean, heck, if uh, while we're doing all this, we could even experiment throwing them up here, right? That's another possible option. Um, in my opinion... Almost any of these are, I'm not, I'm not a huge fan of this one, but getting it away from uh, these tangents helps a lot, really helps that feel. So there you go. There's some, some UI design. Um, I don't totally know what this is down here. It feels like a part of the UI that like shouldn't be on the main menu. Like maybe that's a bug. Uh, we could also have the spaceship lead to the play button too. Yeah. I mean, you could, you definitely could. Um... Further left, closer to the original location. Uh, what, for the offset? Like this? Kind of like that or something? Kind of lining up against the, the player. I mean, that produces fewer of those tangents. That's kind of hard to tell. But uh, yes, like that. I mean, I kind of like how it kind of follows the silhouette of the, of the character a little bit. We do still run into some of the same problems, but it's not as egregious. And then that button placement feels a little more intentional because when it's offset like that, 
you kind of are willing to believe a little bit more, oh, they actually meant to do this. And you're going to overlook some things because you feel it's intentional. As humans, we value effort. That's another important lesson. If you can really convey to someone you are putting a lot of effort into something, they're more willing to forgive any sort of like little mistakes or problems. So cool. All right, let's dive in. Campaign settings. Hold on. Okay. The music is gone. I don't know why the music is gone. Okay. No, no, no. I don't want to, I don't want to do arcade. Let's try launching this again. Because when I, when I clicked on it, it launched twice and one of those had the music and, and, and worked. And then, and then I closed that one accidentally. Different logo typeface. That was interesting. Uh, here we go. Campaign. This demo only grants you access to the con- Ah, there we go. There's the music. Lurk, thank you so much to Sis Dawdling. Thank you for the lurk. Good to see ya. Thanks for hanging out. Demo only grants you access to the combat arcade. Oh, okay. You can play the campaign in the full version of Hadley's Run. The full campaign features a roguelike gameplay loop, storyline, scripted levels with more intricate challenges, wider varieties, excuse me, more enemies, bosses, uh, characters to meet and build relationships with, and three distinct galaxies to explore. This is cool. I like this. And then we have kind of our blurb. Uh, typographically, I'd like this to look a little bit different, so I know this is like... Um, stylistic this is not information to convey this is uh, the story experience an african space western adventure and they could do that with line work they could bring it in italicize it uh, well i guess it's all italicized so unitalicize it give it a different weight or something just something to indicate this is different right experience an african space western adventure with beautiful graphics and engaging gameplay you are hadley aura captain of the starship musafir can you use your wits, creativity, and all-around badass gaming skill to turn our nuggety... Oh, our badass gaming skill to turn our nuggety protagonist from a reluctant smuggler into a certified intergalactic killing machine. Wow. Interesting goal. <laughs> okay. Uh, go to our Steam page. I can't click on that and go to Steam. Have, have links on your calls to action. I guess we have find out more, and that takes you to Steam. Yeah. Click and find out more takes you to the Steam page. Actually, hold on. Let me let me throw the Steam page in chat for the people who are interested. Okay. Um, click the arcade button to your left and have a go. Cool. All right. Let's give it a shot. Controls. In this demo version, you're limited to one weapon and ability configuration. You have a bolt cannon as your weapon, force field as your primary ability, and auto turrets as your secondary ability. Movement, WSDA. Shooting, up, down, left, right. Oh, so it's, uh, it's, uh, it's twin stick. It's twin stick shooter. Dash is space, primary ability, E, secondary ability, F. Okay. Defeat enemies to earn points. And you can earn bonus points by increasing your score modifier. Okay. You can't find mod? Okay, well, I'll be finishing this up in a few minutes. You go uh, hang out for a little bit and play, and then we can go find mom together, okay? All right. Sounds good. Will you be increasing your stream time in the future? We will be. Yes. Uh, especially during the game jam. We're going to be streaming for more time. We're going to be streaming on Saturdays as well. So this is a part of the UI that was not supposed to be on the main screen. Boy, that is loud music. Hold on. Let me bring that down a little bit. Okay. Whoa. Hey, really good visual effects, actually. Big fan of the visual effects. We got some space junk. Uh, you got a little bit of a, a stop and go. It's a little bit... Um, I'm not going to say uh, clunky. I'm going to say slippery. But really good, uh, really good effects. I like this screen a lot, actually. We've got different colors, which I'm going to assume are different categories of buffs that we get, right? These are classic roguelike buffs, I'm imagining. And I see rare up here. Good typography. Guys, this is good typography. Um, this feels a little bit out of place compared to everything else. The space junk collected and the health lost. But that rare is tight. That is great typography. And the title and everything here, you dealt it, they smelt it. After dashing, I didn't know I could dash, you leave behind a trail that slows enemies by 30%. Each additional level of this upgrade increases the slow amount by 10%. That sounds cool. Impedance Amplifier increases the strength of your force field, applying a 10% stronger slowing effect. I have a force field that slows things? Defense Matrix increases your shield hit points. Okay, let's go for backdoor trots. I like the button, by the way. And good signifier that it's a button when I mouse over it. We flip the colors. That's a good signifier that you can click it. 
Um, the floppy disk is fine. Retro sci-fi there. So I just get the one. I can only pick one. Okay. Uh, oh, space is our dash. Okay, and that's our that's our, our backdoor trots. Great. It is still very loud. Let me turn that down a little. Um, good visual. I mean, very good feedback on all that. And then the if you saw the um, ripples around the other ship, saying that hey, we did hit them with the slow. Check that out. Right. You can very pretty quickly tell what you have slowed or not. That's good. I will say that black background on the explosion is a little oppressive. It kind of nukes a lot of the screen. And they have a lot of straight up black. We've talked about straight up black before. Don't use straight up black. Use some sort of color mix, right? Um, so now we have the store. This is another area that feels kind of unfinished because of this. The button, uh, once again, looks like it should be rounded and it isn't, but should be. Um, the, the black thing up here on top of this parchment sort of background with the ragged edge um, clearly seems to be a work in progress. So this is our store. This is a lot less visually enticing than the upgrades page was. Uh, your analytical skill and vocabulary is pretty impressive. Well, thank you, Trevron. I appreciate that. Uh, I've spent a long time developing it, and it is also what will probably be the biggest obstacle to us ever having a large community. <laughs> um, so let's talk about table design. As a B2B enterprise product designer for 10 years, I've designed a lot of tables. <laughs> Let's talk about table design. Um, I don't know what these columns mean. I'm assuming that that is a problem because of this black thing here, that that's not supposed to be there, and there will be table names here. But we have data displayed in some pretty rough ways. We have this column with zeros and this column with numbers. And both of those are the same typographic styles. So it's hard for me to tell at a glance what each of those is supposed to be. I'm going to guess that this is zero ranks purchased out of a possible 30, 100, 350. That's a lot of ranks to buy, though. I don't know if that's quite right. Each level of this upgrade increases your base hit points by 1%. Okay. So we got a lot of really small text in here. I'm glad that they shrunk it down so it's more easy to digest, but it is still rough. All of this, like, this is just, like, I don't even want to read it. It's, it's very hard to just muster the willpower to actually read that thing no level and cost oh level and cost that would make sense jack yeah that would make a lot of sense um the first is the amount the second is the cost okay i, I was apparently the one with the wrong idea um in which case i would really expect these numbers to be different right i would expect cost to tie into like space junk somehow maybe have a space junk icon next to them or something and maybe that's in the header and we just can't see it right now um, let's increase shields. Okay. Great. So you guys were right. Um, yeah, this, just, this text is rough. Find another way to communicate this amount, whether it's iconography or, um, redoing the table layout. So it's not a strict table. Maybe they're cards. Maybe they're, you know, any, any number of things. I don't think this is really working for what they're trying to convey. Do a store layout, right? Have like a little icon of an energized barrier and you met with a little price tag on it. You hover over it and you say, increase shield amount by 1%. We also have a lot of each level of, every level of, uh, whenever you have a lot of repeated stuff like that, you can look at, can we just remove that? And contextually, I think that would make sense. You could get rid of five words here, each level of this upgrade. You could just nuke that. We, we kind of contextually understand that's what this is going to be about, right? Okay. Oh, we're starting to get some backgrounds. We've got some black holes whirling around. Okay. The black holes don't feel like they match the rest of the aesthetic of the game. And I don't know if they're an asset pack or what. Uh, one, one, one second. Hold on. All right. Uh, will I get hurt if I go in the black hole? Whoops. I like the dash. So, games that... Oh, black hole kills you. Just straight up dead. Okay. <laughs> um, I, I like this off-centeredness. This diagonal really works. The It breaks the mold and draws a lot of visual interest. 
Also diagonal lines draw your interest because they are a sign of danger, right? So use diagonals uh, judiciously and intelligently. Uh, you gotta head off for the stream, enjoy the rest and have a splendiferous time zone. Oh, thank you so much, Avocado. Thanks for coming in, welcome. Thank you for the follow, it's good to have you in here. Glad to have you. Um, typography here is uh, serviceable, right? Uh, new high score, that's good. I like the little call out. I feel like that could even be bigger, right? Because we have the big score and then new high score, when really kind of all I care about is did I get a new high score? Um, I, that could be like a big badge coming in or something, right? Let's do one more run. Were those upgrade card graphics AI generated? I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. All right. Let's grab all these guys. I, I'm missing my, my slowdown farts, which is a bummer. I do love a lot of these VFX, though. It, it, everything does feel a little bit discordant. I do wonder how much of this is uh, an asset pack uh, mishmash, which is fine. Like, lots of great games have been made with asset packs, but it does come with a downside where it can feel like things don't quite match up visually. That transition screen is very good. The text coming in, the level complete, and the, the red uh, offset, very good. Assembly lines, auto turret cooldown is decreased by two seconds. I have an auto turret? That's the other thing is like, is this gonna give me an auto turret? Or will I get it and it will be useless until I find an auto turret? Or do I have an auto turret and I don't know about it? Let's find out. The, the animations need to be snappier there too. There's a lot of pausing in between states. Those need to be a lot faster. Uh, a lot of things could be sped up in this as well to increase that uh, sort of flow that you can get into as a player. Um, like the time between waves is pretty long. It doesn't need to be that long. Like I'd like it if you could detect when I destroy everything on screen and then move to the next wave. I don't know that there's a big reason not to do that. I do like the graininess paper style of the UI. I do too. I can imagine like a starship captain with some crunk, crumpled up, you know, brown paper bag from lunch writing all this down on it. It creates a certain aesthetic in a certain world. And I like that. So I'm still not seeing any sort of, um... yeah, and those are like 3D, whereas nothing else has been 3D. So I'm betting this is asset pack stuff. And it's, it's hard to make disparate art packs feel cohesive. Also, because they are, like, objects, I kind of feel like I should be able to shoot them and detonate them. And the fact that I can't is a little frustrating. So we are in a minefield now. Um, okay. Auto reloader applies a bonus to the bolt cannon firing rate. So you could just say increase fire rate. These are ways you can really uh, streamline and simplify your design is through your text. Don't ignore your text. Um, Mr. Delivery, when dashing, you leave behind a bomb. Every additional level of this upgrade increases the damage of the bomb. That sounds fun. So increase fire rate by 5%, kind of a boring upgrade. Uh, Dwarven Spirit increases the space junk you find. Okay, increased resources is good. I normally would go for that, but I want I want to see what the bomb dash does. And I pressed E and that brought up this shield. Oh, F. F places a turret. Okay. And we've got a good signifier there of what will the turret hit or not. That's good. And is this like an elite enemy? Is that a Tron trail? Is that going to hurt me if I run into it? That's cool. I liked all that. It was very cool. Oh, and there's my dash bomb. Nice. So it's a mine. Oh, dear. A mine. <laughs> if you caught that reference, we can be very friends. Uh, okay, no store in between uh, level four and level five. Interesting. I wonder why. New enemy types. I like that we're still seeing new enemy types. Every new wave has brought in new enemy types, and that's that's good. This type of game really thrives on what is and is not, uh, or rather, what, what new enemy types can they bring in, right? Oh, we do have a UI for the turrets. It's in the bottom left. It's one of those diamonds. And I have one charge left of turrets. Is that gonna reset at the end of the round over time? Or do I have to buy them at a store?
Uh, I'm actually, the, the dash feels good. The movement is feeling fairly snappy. I'm actually feeling kind of empowered um, to do some cool stuff here. I'm liking this overall. I think it's got more to go. I'm really curious what that roguelike mode would do. Uh, I mean, this is obviously a roguelike mode, but it's an arcade roguelike. I'm curious what their their main roguelike mode is. Um, cooldown. Okay, and that's one thing I'm missing is I don't know what the cooldown is on this. Oh, and we get to buy something. Invuln period after dashing. Sure, we're going to be doing a lot of dashing. It's weird that this was before this one when this is more expensive. Feels like the more expensive ones should come later. It should be like sorted by cost. So if I drop all of my turrets, there we go. Now I get a cooldown. So other games, oh, we've got some darkness here. I, I like that. I hate it, but I like it from a design perspective. Uh, other games, what they will do is if you have it available and it's on cooldown because there's charges of it, they will um, have a more transparent cooldown overlay. So it still looks enabled, but if you look closely at it, you can tell what the cooldown period actually is. I think that would be helpful here. And then I've got another diamond down there. E is that blue one, the shield. It makes that shield which kind of slows things down, which is cool. I like that. Um, but what is the uh, third diamond? Oh, no, the, the pink one is the shield. Never mind. So what's the blue one? Is that our dash? Ah, that's the dash. Okay. I also like the random backgrounds that we're getting here. It makes it feel like a story is happening, right? It's it's an implied story. Uh, Foolbox. Well, I was talking about that with Foolbox. When he brought color into the backdrops of his screenshots on Steam, uh, just every different screenshot had a different colored backdrop. And it felt like this puzzle game was taking place inside of a narrative world. And it got me way more excited. And I would it makes you feel like you're progressing a lot more. So that's a really simple and powerful hack. I mean, we're doing pretty good here. Like, I'm not feeling very much in danger. We haven't really had problems. That would probably be my biggest gameplay complaint so far, other than the UI stuff, is I'm just not feeling very in danger and it's feeling kind of slow. I want things to be moving a little bit more quickly. Like the first wave or two, I would understand, but I'm not feeling a ton of improvement. Let's, uh, let's re-roll. I can't re-roll, okay. So that's not a cost of zero, that's how many re-rolls you have left. When an enemy is hit by the bolt cannon in quick succession, the second projectile does more damage. Increasing stacks increases bonus damage. Bonus damage for subsequent hits is 10% per level of this upgrade. So that's a full paragraph to describe that effect. That could definitely be condensed, but let's go for it. So far, the only thing that killed me was instant death black holes. I don't think anything has even hurt my health yet. Okay, there we go. Lay down some mines, get ready for the next wave. I wonder if there's a cap on how many of those can be out at any given point. Or should I just be like spamming this? Like I took a lot of hits there and I still have a good amount of shield left. Also, it'd be great to tell like how much of a wave is left. You know, am I getting near the end? Can I blow all my abilities? Or are there more wave uh, coming? Ooh, new enemy type. I like this, turning into sort of a bullet hell sort of thing. That's good. This is cool. I do think the strongest thing this game has for it is uh, the aesthetic. It's the world that they've built. Had some food and water, welcome back, Merlin. Good to see you. Back to 20% functionality for my brain. Those are rookie numbers, Merlin. You gotta get those numbers up. What's going on here? We're doing an analysis of, um, oh, what's it called? Uh, Hadley's Run, A Starship Saga. There we go. Um, developer reached out wanting us to check it out and it's, uh, it's, it's, it's fun. There's a lot of really interesting stuff. Let's go for legendary upgrades. That sounds fun um, and sure. I don't know. Let's get some more. See, that's the thing. When it's so much and it's so overwhelming, I kind of just start clicking on things. 
So this is a twin stick shooter roguelike in an African space Western is how they describe it. And it's pretty cool in a lot of ways. It's got a lot of ways yet to go uh, before it's something really great, but I think it could get there. A lot of it is uh, polish and usability stuff, but there is no reason why uh, why it couldn't be addressed. Because as far as the like systems go, I don't, other than maybe not seeing enough exciting upgrades, I'm not seeing anything that is really stopping this from being something great. Upgrade descriptions are way too long. Yeah, I agree, Jack, I agree. Like I'm not seeing anything that's barring this from being a really great game. I think the bones are really strong and the implementation is really good. I think it's like 70% of the way there. Like, this is feeling good. Now that we're getting a lot more projectiles on the screen and I'm having to do a lot more active dodging and everything, this is feeling great. I want this four waves earlier. Okay. And I've been forgetting to put down my turrets. I need some sort of like key uh, reminder on the UI to tell me this is what you do to activate this. Um, sure, let's go with that. Yeah, just everything needs to be a lot snappier. We don't need to be spending that much time on that. Uh, sleep well, guys. Have a great rest of the stream. Thank you so much, Merlin. Thanks for hanging out. Uh, and you know what? I think this is probably going to do it for this. Um, I think we've said most of what we're going to be able to say right now. I, I want to be seeing a lot more interesting upgrades that like change how things operate. And I think we might get there if we played long enough but we have to play long enough. And that's kind of the problem I'm at right now is I'm putting a lot of trust in the game to keep going. Thank you, Cubis. Nova Drift. That's what I keep meaning to say when I say uh, competition, right? This game's principal competition is Nova Drift, 100%. Um, and what is the USP? Frankly, I think it is narrative. And you can, you can have that be your driving uh, factor. Narrative is a powerful, powerful tool that differentiates games from other games that are better. But I just, I need to be seeing some of that and I'm, I'm not, oh guy. All right. Yeah, I think that'll, that'll be it today for uh, Hadley's Drift. This was so much fun. Thank you so much everyone for joining us. Oh man, 